One of 2023's most highly anticipated films is Denis Villeneuve's Dune Part 2, the second installment in his adaptation of Frank Herbert's classic sci-fi epic. With a much-beloved source material that many have deemed unfilmable, there have been several attempts at adaptations throughout the decades. However, each has proven special in its own way, offering a unique interpretation of the novel's many characters and various complex themes. The story of Dune features a large cast of characters, with even those that are in minor or supporting roles having a significant contribution to the overall story. How the various interpretations have handled this ensemble of characters serves to set each adaptation apart. Though director Denis Villeneuve has proven his dedication to the source material, he himself has also taken several creative liberties regarding the many characters of the story. How Villeneuve has brought the varied cast of characters to the big screen in Dune Part 1, and how he intends to finish his adaptation as he takes on the second half of the story, is a subject of much discussion and speculation. In this video, I'd like to discuss one particular casting decision that has recently been revealed, and what the latest news could indicate about their mysterious role. In an exclusive by The Hollywood Reporter, it was revealed that actor Tim Blake Nelson had been cast in Dune Part 2. For the sequel, the actor joins other newcomers, Christopher Walken, Austin Butler, Florence Pugh, and Leah Sadu. However, details as to who Nelson would be playing were still being kept under wraps. Most recently, Nelson has appeared in Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities, as well as lending his voice to del Toro's stop-motion Pinocchio film. The actor is also known for his roles in the Coen Brother films, O oh Brother Where Art Thou, and The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Throughout Nelson's long career, he has become very well known to audiences as a character actor, with many memorable performances and varied bizarre roles. Nelson's penchant for playing eccentric characters has led to many theories and speculation regarding which role in Dune would be most suited for the actor's talents. Upon the initial revelation of the actor's casting, it was thought by many that Nelson would be playing the role of Count Hasimir Fenring. Fenring is a close friend of the Padishah Emperor Shaddam IV, who will be played by Christopher Walken in this new adaptation. Fenring also serves the Emperor as his mentat, political tactician, and assassin. In the book, the Count is described as a small man with overly large dark eyes and gray hair at the temples. He is noted for having difficult to follow body movements and an unusual speech pattern, which is a humming code employed by him and his Bene Gesserit wife, Lady Margot, to communicate secretly with each other. Leah Sadu has already been revealed as playing the role of Lady Margot Fenring, and while there is no denying that Tim Blake Nelson could certainly turn in a great performance as the Count, I have continued to have a strong suspicion that the actor is taking on a much more mysterious and bizarre role for the sequel, and the most recent news regarding Nelson's performance might have just confirmed my theory. In a recent appearance on the WTF podcast with Mark Marin, the actor revealed just a snippet of information regarding his upcoming role in Dune Part 2. When Nelson was asked if he was in fact in the upcoming Dune production, the actor confirmed that he is in the sequel and noted specifically that he does a cameo. Knowing that the scope of his role is limited to a cameo appearance certainly helps when it comes to narrowing down the characters he could portray. The fact that Nelson is set to only have a brief appearance and that unlike Leia Sadu's casting as Lady Fenring, his role is being kept secret, I can't help but continue to suspect that the actor is much more likely to be playing a member of the mysterious Spacing Guild. The Spacing Guild is an immensely influential organization upon which the entire empire depends for trade and transportation. They are as powerful as they are secretive. In Dune Part 1, we see a glimpse of their enormous highliner ships that enable instantaneous interstellar travel. Several representatives in clergy-like garb wearing helmets that contain swirling orange gas are present on Caladan as part of the Empire's delegation to formalize House Atreides accepting stewardship of Arrakis. The Spacing Guild itself and the monopoly they hold on fast and safe interstellar transportation isn't explored in much detail in the first installment. 
There is only a brief description given in a scene with Paul where a voice readout of his film book states that the spice is used by the navigators of the Spacing Guild to find safe paths between the stars, and that without spice, interstellar travel is impossible, making it by far the most valuable substance in the universe. In previous interviews, the director has stated his insistence was to keep the Guild and space travel itself mysterious. He confirmed that there was some creative liberty taken with how space folding is accomplished in his adaptation, as it is shown to function similar to that of a Stargate. He made sure to emphasize that he wanted to keep the mechanics of space travel and navigation a mystery, and that it will be more permanent and explained in Part 2. There are several possibilities for Nelson's portrayal of a member of the Spacing Guild, depending on how much mystery Denis Villeneuve intends to maintain for the upcoming sequel, and how much he intends to stick to the source material from the first novel. Many have suspected that Nelson could be playing the role of a Guild navigator. However, along with this suspicion, it is also assumed that the depiction of Nelson's Navigator would be more in line with how they are described in Frank Herbert's sequel novels, as opposed to how they are actually described in scenes from the first book. A Gill Navigator is a human that over time has consumed large quantities of the Spice Melange, as they advance to the stage where they are continually immersed in large tanks filled with highly concentrated amounts of spice in gas form. Gradually, their body mutates and atrophies, resembling a humanoid fish, while their mind attains a level of clairvoyance necessary to foresee and chart safe paths through space. Its massive highliner ships would then fold space along that route to ensure safe arrival to their destination. It is established early on in Frank Herbert's novel that the Spacing Guild is just as jealous of its privacy as it is its monopoly on space travel. As such, no one is allowed to see a Guild Navigator, and it is rumored that they hide because the Spice has mutated them. As the Dune Saga unfolds, more details are provided regarding this mysterious organization and the stages of mutation that a Navigator progresses through. If Villeneuve is strictly following the source material from just the first novel when it comes to the presentation of the Spacing Guild, then we likely won't see an advanced stage of Navigator. However, Guild agents who are later confirmed to be Navigators will be present on Arrakis when it becomes clear the flow of their precious spice is in danger. The Guildsmen present in the Emperor's entourage are apparently in the earlier stages of their spice mutation. They have the deep blue within blue eyes to indicate their addiction, which they keep hidden with contacts, and it is confirmed that they do possess a level of prescience at this stage. Given that we've already seen an early stage navigator in Dune Part 1, it's possible Nelson could be arrayed as one of these decadent-looking figures whose face is barely visible under the orange smoke-filled helmet. Or the actor could portray an even less mutated guild member with early prescience who does not yet require this level of equipment. No doubt he would be dressed accordingly to indicate his privileged position within the guild. It's also possible that, in line with previous adaptations, Nelson could be an advanced navigator, a fish in a strange sea immersed in a spice tank. Regardless of which member of the guild itself Nelson might end up portraying, I would be thrilled if we at least get a glimpse or a cameo of an advanced navigator looking into the future to guide its massive Highliner ship safely through the stars. The previous adaptations of Dune have featured a scene with an advanced navigator, even though this is not described in the first book itself. However, it has always been clear that the reason behind this creative liberty was to emphasize the influence of the guild within the Empire itself, the power of the spice to unlock prescience within humans, and just how dependent the universe itself has become on this single commodity. If indeed Nelson is lending his acting talents to represent the Spacing Guild, then it certainly makes sense for it to be described as a cameo, as there's no basis in the novel for extensive scenes featuring the Guild Steersman. Obviously, this is all speculation on my part, and I could be entirely wrong in my theories. At the end of the day, 
I'm sure that regardless of who Tim Blake Nelson ends up portraying, as with most of his other roles, I'm confident in Nelson's potential to turn in a memorable performance. But I'm curious to know what do you think regarding this news surrounding Tim Blake Nelson's casting? Which of the theories about his mysterious role do you think are more likely, and which role from the book do you think would suit him best? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.